Hello, I'm JW. This time we have an item to have a look at and also dismantle. And it's in this little box here. And this has actually been sent in by David, who obtained this item from an eBay seller, no doubt somewhere in China, but uh, wasn't particularly impressed with the quality of the item and therefore did actually get a refund. The uh, seller didn't want the item back, probably because it was too cheap and uh, hardly worth uh, actually sending it back and it would cost more to send it back than the uh, item costs. Now, here's the actual thing, and it's one of these uh, efforts where you can monitor the voltage and current. Uh, it sort of clips onto a standard rail at the back there. So uh, let's uh, have a look, see if it works, and we'll take it apart to see what's inside. So this is what we've got. Uh, it comes in this sort of plain uh, box with just the description and code number on the front there. And we also get a little instruction leaflet and of course the device itself. Now it's designed to clip onto a uh, standard sort of DIN rail type thing, so it just hooks over there and uh, the spring clip holds it on at the bottom. It's got a little diagram on the side there to indicate how to connect it. And then on the front it's got two uh, sets of LEDs, so voltage here and current there. So uh, our idea is just put this into a, uh, an enclosure or a panel that sticks through the front. And then of course you can see your voltage and current. Now this doesn't actually weigh a great deal, so uh, there's not going to be a huge amount in this. So it's uh, 120 grams actually it weighs. And the enclosure is totally plastic and it seems to be just clipped together. And unfortunately on this side it's already uh, unclipping itself, so it's certainly not what you call a high quality item. Of course, it's not going to be a high cost item either. Now, the way these things work, they only have two connections, so the two uh, wires go in the bottom here, and that's basically your main supply, so sort of 240 volts or whatever voltage you're using, just the two terminals, and that powers the device, and also, of course, is where it's measuring the voltage from as well. And for the current, it's actually all done through this hole, so you're essentially just passing the wire through the hole there, and we come out at the top, and there's going to be a uh, current transformer inside, which of course then uh, measures the current there and displays it on the green thing on the front. And that's just what's shown on the diagram at the side there. So it's an AC input to the two terminals, and then of course your wire goes through the whole of the device, and that's where the current sensing part is. And then of course your load is connected over there. And uh, voltage on this is 80 to 300, and uh, current is uh, 0.1 to 99.9 .9 amps, so uh, quite a wide range there. Now, uh, what we'll do, I think, is just uh, may as well just take this apart because uh, it seems to be taking itself apart already, so uh, it's not going to be particularly difficult to get into. This side appears to have some uh, little clips there, so I'll just uh, I can press those and uh, open it up. So there we have it, the terminals appear to be uh, holding that in place there, which is somewhat uh, unusual, so we have to actually undo those completely to get them out of there, but just poke them through with a screwdriver. Right, so there we have it. So as expected, not going to be a huge amount inside. So here's the uh, current transformer here, just uh, actually well, not really very glued on, it might have been glued on once, but uh, anyway, it's just sort of placed over this plastic tube, which is where the wire would go through from the outside. And again, that's just going to be a coil of wire there, just going down to the two terminals on the board. The glue seems to have failed, and it was only put on a jaunty angle anyway, so that's not uh, particularly good. And we've got the two terminals at the top here, which is where the mains voltage and, of course, the uh, supply for the thing comes in. A uh, single board in the front, which would just hold those... Uh, green and red LEDs there, the usual seven segment type. And then we've got the circuit board in the bottom here, which of course is going to do everything else, just that bit of uh, flat ribbon type cable coming across. Now the circuit board held in with just some very small screws there, so we'll just remove those. Yeah, that's it, just those two there. And these mains terminals should just drop off. So the terminal is just simply a uh, loop of uh, cast metal, the uh, threaded screw coming down in the top, and that's literally just placed over these tabs which are just soldered straight into the circuit board. So 
obviously that will do the job, they're not going to be particularly durable, but on the other hand you're not going to be uh, connecting and disconnecting this thing very often, probably just a one-time install, so probably uh, good enough for the application in question. Now the front here is just going to be literally those uh, seven segment displays, so I'll leave that in there because uh, there's not going to be anything on the other side other than the natural things themselves. You can just see the pins coming through the back, and of course the uh, connections on the circuit board and coming across to the uh, main board over here, so that's all that's in there. So here's the main circuit board, and this is the connections here to that little coil or the current transformer. You see they're just uh, tacked down straight onto those two pads there. So, and uh, so the mains comes in at the top here. Let's remove that uh, screw there. So we've got here a uh, fairly large capacitor, so presumably this is just a uh, capacitive dropper. And uh, if we just check the uh, rating of that. Okay, so it's a uh, 400 volt one, so uh, that seems uh, quite reasonable. So if you're using up to uh, the uh, main voltage in the UK, that's fine. This did say it actually goes up to uh, 300 volts AC, so uh, 300 volts AC with a 400 volt cap is a bit dodgy because the uh, peak value will actually be more than 400, but uh, anyway, it's uh, of the uh, sort they could have put in. The uh, 400 is uh, probably just as well. A couple of large resistors there, and uh, the uh, actual rest of it is basically just a few uh, capacitors and uh, Looks like a few diodes in here. And we've got two devices up here. And we've got one main device here. And there's another smaller one in the center. So uh, let's get in a bit closer and see if we can see what those are. So here's a much closer look at the board. So you've got your mains uh, voltage coming on these tabs here, which are just literally soldered straight down into the board there. A uh, little resistor there, and then this large uh, red capacitor here. And uh, on the board itself, we've got uh, a fair number of what looks like resistors down there. That uh, device there, which is marked M7, which I believe is a, uh, a diode. It's marked uh, D1 next to it. And the uh, four pin device here is presumably a bridge rectifier, as we've got the uh, two connections on this side, which essentially just go over to the mains connections. And then we've got plus and minus on the output, so uh, presumably just the uh, rectified current going out the other side. And uh, the back of it, uh, there's no components on the back, it's just purely the uh, rather small number of traces there. So, uh, bridge rectifier there then, it's marked MB10S, and then we have a small number of uh, capacitors and things here. And over this side, a much uh, larger resistor there, and another. We've got some uh, little glass diodes, uh, Zener diodes presumably, as it says ZD uh, next to them. A couple more resistors and things in the bottom there. And we've got a, a single three pin device there which uh, says uh, J3Y, so probably a uh, transistor of some kind. Uh, a few more uh, resistors and uh, diodes over the back there. And then this uh, eight pin chip here, which is probably what does uh, everything, including driving the display there. So. Uh, what have we got that? That's an EZ422. Yeah, let's just get the angle on there, and 082C, so uh, that presumably does everything. And the rest of it is purely just uh, various uh, passive components. And these capacitors, so let's just have a look here, 470, and that's 16 volts. And we've got 10 at 25 volts, 4.7 at 50 volts. Well, that's 60 volt there, claims to be 105 uh, degree rated. Yeah, same on that one. And then a couple over here, which also claim to be 105s. And uh, again, they're just uh, 16 volts, and the one next to it is 50. So uh, somewhat inconsistent with the uh, voltage ratings there. But uh, bearing in mind, all this is going to be running at uh, very low voltages anyway, so not likely to be a problem. So let's uh, just put the thing back together, and then we can see if it does actually work. Of course, if it doesn't work, does that mean it never worked, or does it mean I've broken it? Well, <laughs> let's hope it does work, so uh, let's, I'll uh, put this back together, and then we'll uh, shove some uh, current and things through it, see uh, what kind of readings we get. Here's the instructions while we uh, turn the thing on. And again, I've got this uh, wiring diagram here, which is for the one that we've got. 
apparently some of the models have a uh, additional terminals there for an external current transformer. So this particular one does not, it's only got the two at the bottom, it's got the moulding holes, but of course there's nothing actually in them. So it says here, displays AC voltage and current at the same time, and if the current is lower than 99.9 amps, then you can use the basic one built in, and if not you can use the external one, but of course if you bought this one you're out of luck because it doesn't have the connections for the external current transformer anyway, so not going to happen. Now it's claiming a 1% accuracy, and uh, the displays are 0.5 inch LED digital tubes apparently, and uh, as we saw on the side it's 80 to 300 volts, and uh, the current is up to 99.9 .9 amps. Now I'm not quite sure what it says here, 200 to 450, but uh, I presume that's for the other model which we don't have. Uh, updates twice per second, dimensions, and of course fixed on the rail, and the installation which is pretty much as shown in the diagram at the bottom. Voltage there, current as far the hole inside, and that's pretty much it, so uh, certainly not a great deal of information there, and the box is uh, equally as uh, lacking, it's just literally the model number, and that is it. And it's got that Chinese export uh, mark there, and obviously it was made in China. So we'll see if this thing does actually work. So we've got the Variac here, so we can adjust the voltage that goes in. That comes out on this uh, block here, and then comes over to these two connections here and here. And uh, we've got the uh, meter to display the voltage here, just connected on these two terminals here. And uh, from here, we've also got two wires going up to the device itself, so that's what powers it, and also how it measures the voltage. And for the current, this uh, brown wire here actually goes through the hole in the back of the device, and then it also goes through this clamp meter as well, so you can see the current here, which should of course match up with the current displayed here. And the uh, wires then continue around and go over to the other side, where you see there's just that uh, extension block over there. And if you have a look over there, you see that there's that sort of four-way extension thing in the background there. And the load we're using is actually this electric heater, and this is actually a belling heater from the 1950s. So it has been repainted since then, but uh, using that because it doesn't have any kind of fan in it, it's purely a heating element. And it has a red lamp in the bottom, and then this switch on the side can be used to switch between half or full power. So we'll start out with it on half, and the lamp in the bottom works uh, regardless of the setting of the switch. So I've just repositioned the camera there so we can see the three displays, so it's voltage here, current here, and of course the uh, voltage and current here should match up with the two meters on either side. So we'll switch on, but uh, bearing in mind this uh, thing here only works from something like 60 volts upwards, so at low voltages we don't expect it to work at all. So we'll just turn on there, so we're pretty much at no volts there, so let's just turn up until we get something uh, in the sort of normal kind of operating range. So we're getting something on that display in the middle, but uh, not particularly uh, credible there, so let's go up to about 60. So that's about 60 volts. Uh, meter middle showing 59, which I suppose is uh, reasonable. Uh, Current-wise, uh, the uh, meter is displaying 1 amp, but we're actually only getting 0.89 amps there, so that does seem uh, rather off. And the heater is, uh, on the side here, is just about glowing in the bottom, but of course it's only at 60 volts, so I can't really see much going on in there. So let's uh, turn up a bit. So we're just coming to about 100 volts there, so again that thing in the middle is showing 98, which is uh, sort of 2 volts uh, down. And again the current is actually uh, considerably off, that's sort of 1.6 there, but we're actually only getting about 1.4. So uh, that uh, definitely is way outside of the 1% thing claimed. And we see the heat is just sort of uh, starting to glow uh, orangey inside. So let's uh, increase a bit more. So that's just about uh, 200 or 199 there. Again, meter in the middle is 197, and again the current is way off, it's uh, 3.1 amps in the middle, but the uh, actual current is only 2.7, and we we'll see the uh, orange glow here from the side. So let's try the heat on the uh, higher setting, so of course voltage should stay around the same, but the current will increase significantly. 
So uh, voltage is now about 196, and uh, current now is around, uh, well, 6.1 amps if you believe that thing in the middle, but in reality it's actually about 5.4, so uh, certainly the current reading on this thing is uh, way off. And you hear that crackling noise, it's just burning off bits of dust inside that uh, electric heater. Now let's go up to the full 240. So I won't go above 240 because uh, I've seen that capacitor inside is only rated for 400 volts peak, so uh, that theoretically goes up to 300. I don't particularly want to take it up there. So voltage-wise it's reasonable. I mean, we've got sort of just over 240 on the uh, left fluke meter. I think the middle's showing 238 or 239, so that's within 1 volt, so clearly within the 1%. But the current, though, is, is way off. I mean, it's showing sort of 7.4, 7.5. But the actual current is only around 6.6 .6 or 6.7, so clearly that's very far away from 1%. So in conclusion then, the uh, thing itself, I mean, it clearly does work. Uh, Voltage-wise, it's uh, reasonably accurate. But unfortunately, the current uh, display is uh, very inaccurate, uh, clearly way off from that 1% that it claims, so certainly not uh, desperately useful. And the other problem as well here is that this current display is not going to be taken into account uh, things like power factor. So we've got a purely resistive load here. We've got soon to start putting uh, electric motors and the like on there. Then again, that current is going to be pretty much meaningless, even if it was fairly accurate. So fairly uh, useless device in reality. If you just want to display the voltage and some kind of rough estimate of the current, then probably fair enough, but uh, fairly limited and not a great deal of use. And of course, whether you'd want to leave this sort of thing uh, permanently powered in its uh, rather flimsy plastic casing, is another matter entirely, because of course if you're going to install this in a panel or something, it's going to be pretty much turned on permanently. But of course it's a very cheap device, so really you can't expect too much from it. So until next time, thanks for watching.